friends and neighbors, Stevie Coyle here at Mighty Fine Guitars in Lafayette, California, in the San Francisco East Bay. Welcome to the Friday Noontime webcast, where almost every Friday I try to feature one of the several dozen fabulous guitars that walk into my shop with people attached to them. And uh, these, these are guitars that, for whatever reason, people are not playing. If I had to name the place again, as you probably know if you've ever watched one of these Friday Noontime webcasts, TM, before, you know that uh, these guitars just walk in. And if I had to name the place again, I'd probably call the place Karma Guitars. Because a lot of folks walk in with guitars and say, you know, I'm screwing up my karma. I've got this guitar. I'm not playing it. Somebody should be playing it. Let's get it out there in the world. So that's what this shop is all about. You're welcome. Checking to make sure things are happening on Facebook. Oh, Lord, there we go. All right. I think we're okay. Come on in. Uh, six of you. Very good. Odd-looking guitar. I concur. Oh, let me turn the sound down here. The uh, I concur. A rather odd-looking guitar inside and out. And I'll show you pictures of the inside later on. This is a Klein Kaufman guitar designed by Steve Klein, built by Steve Kaufman. And it's a whole nother thing. There's gibson -y guitars and there's martin -y guitars. In fact, a lot of new builders, and today, of course, these days, these days, old guy talk, these days are really the, uh, the, the heart and soul of the, the golden age of guitar building. There's never been more, there have never been more great builders than there are right now. Klein has been around since the 80s. Uh, he built the first 20-odd Klein guitars, and then Steve Kaufman took over. Klein said, oh, I've designed it, but Kaufman is this, just one of those built-by-the-angels kind of builders. And, uh, so I'll turn the building over to him. And now the guitars are generally referred to as Klein Kaufman guitars, and rightly so. Radical guitar, eh? Rather. Very slender body. Koa, back and sides. Delicious. Mahogany neck. Ebony fingerboard and bridge. And notice that the bridge is, you may have noticed, that the bridge is wider on the, tre on the bass side than it is on the treble side. The, the design concept here that Klein used was, I think, uh, kind of brought to light by a, f a fellow named Kasha, who was better known for building classical guitars and applying these, his principles, these, his principles, the principles he adopted from, uh, from previous designers, I'm sure. As uh, the Kasha principles involve always having the bridge be kind of split and that the bass side, bass string side, should be broader and have more contact with the top than the treble side. This guitar is a little less radical than other Klein guitars, which have individual saddles. How about that? Other radical features are, being very careful here, take a look at that break angle over the nut. I shouldn't even say the nut because, well, we'll get to that in a second. The break angle is really severe. That's great. That puts a lot of pressure on the zero fret, which on this guitar serves as the nut. Zero fret used to be the sign of a fairly inexpensive, cheap, German guitar from the 50s or 60s. Nowadays, though, it makes perfect sense, especially since these guitars, Klein guitars, Klein Kaufman guitars, kind of really light up under alternate tunings, da frequently down tunings, dad gad, orkney dorkney, whatever you got, open D, open C, all kinds of radical open tunings. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you a little story about that in just a sec. Oh, what the hell, I'll tell you now. Sit down, don't beg me. Here's, here's what happened. Joni Mitchell was, I think she actually used the design concept, the shape of this guitar, perhaps with or without a cutaway, I don't recall which one, as a design element on one of the covers of her albums, I believe. Anyway, she was a big fan of Klein guitars, back in the 80s in particular, and she was doing a promo video for Klein. And uh, a video, I wish I could find it. I can't find it on YouTube. I don't know where I saw it, but it was just hilarious. You see her, it's kind of one of these mamras says, Joni, what chord is that you're playing right there? And she said, oh, that, that is the chord of longing. And as you can imagine, a hush fell over the assembled. And uh, the chord of longing, oh yes, that's the chord of longing. Here's his chord, 
Here's her chord. Here's the other guy's chord. Here's the chord of longing. Here's the chord of almost resolution. This is how she thought of chords. She didn't know what the numbers or the letters were on the chords. She was talking about strictly about the emotional component. Wow, what a way to think about guitars. Anyway, big fan of Klein guitars. And back to the zero fret. Since Joni Mitchell played a bunch of stuff in alternate tunings, just sort of cranked the strings until they sounded interesting, and then she'd find shapes that, that worked for her. The, um, the zero fret kind of subs in as the nut on this guitar. This business up here, this kind of white, shiny business, isn't really the nut. It's just string guides that guide the strings up to the proper tuners. The, uh, the nut itself is, or rather the zero fret itself, acts as the nut. Now, if you're a big alternate tuning person, you probably have had the experience of, especially the low strings that are wound, grinding down the depth of the nut through repeated tunings and, and detunings. In this case, you've got some steel sitting right there. As, uh, and I think these are all steel frets. I'll have to look at my design uh, or the uh, build sheet. There's metal there, whatever it is. There's metal that is going to wear much more slowly than any material you'd make the nut out of, chances are. And whereas the zero fret, as it's called, used to be considered, uh, uh, oh my, it's one of those, really pretty, but not great sounding German guitars from the 50s and 60s. I had one myself, a Clara, K-L-I-R-A, Danide. <laughs> on this fairly small for Klein guitars. Now this one is small, 396 millimeters across the, the lower bout. There are bigger ones, 45.7 is, I have one right over there, which go to the website and check it out. It's astonishing too. This one is Sitka top and Koa back and sides, and I'll play it for you and it sounds like this. First of all, let me know folks, is the sound okay? Are you hearing things you want to hear? As I always say, the visuals only get so good. Checking, checking. Hi, Leah DeQueen. Hi, Hugh. There's Stuart. Mike Tanarakis. Hello. Very good. <laughs> Robert B. Gunderson says his karma is good. I'm not sure you're the person to, to say that, Robert, but uh, who else would know better, I suppose? Hi, John Reynolds. Hi, Dan. I, there he is. <laughs> All right. Dan, how, how's the sound? I'll actually play some music. That is just preposterously huge low end. But balanced. put that one back together. Tis the season. It's after Halloween. So it's now it's time to start working on that other holiday that intrudes. I saw decorations for the season that must not be named up a month ago, right here in Lafayette. I felt like getting a picket sign saying, not yet, thank you. Please really, given a choice, till not after Thanksgiving. One holiday at a time, please. <laughs> this size. This guitar was uh, either designed for or co-designed by Muriel Anderson, who is not a large person at all. We had a chance to play with her. Glenn Houston and Pumionic, the Quitters, had a chance to play with her at the Winfield Festival a few years ago, and she was great fun, great gal. Wonderful player, needless to say, if you're not hip to Muriel Anderson, 
check her out. And this guitar was kind of designed with her in mind. Very Kleiny, very Kleiny, which is to say huge sound, especially in alternate tunings. In fact, let me show you, um, but a more manageable size than the 45.7, which is worth a look too. Take a look on the website, go head on over to MightyFunGuitars.com and take a look. There's actually a book all about Klein and Kaufman guitars. The fellow who builds them, Steve Kaufman, used to live just a few hundred yards from the shop here. And in fact, he walked the first one over. His wife came in one day and said, you know what, would you, would you hang Klein Kaufman guitars? My husband is Steve Kaufman. Would you hang the guitars he builds? I said, hell yes. In a word, hell yes. Uh, so, because she, she said, because he should be building guitars instead of building spiral staircases for rich people. I said, you're right. So, a few days later, sure enough, here comes Steve Kaufman. I've met him before up at the, the Klein shop in Sonoma, which was a mecca for years back in the 80s and early 90s. Wonderful spot. He came walking over, holding a fabulous Klein guitar in his hand like this. He didn't have a case for it. Cases are tough to find for these things. They take much longer to come in than the guitars usually take to build just because they have to be built uh, custom-wise. And he walked over with the thing. I said, holy smokes. He lived uh, 200 yards that way. There used to be a fellow lived 200 yards that way that wrote this book called Art That Sings, The Life and Times of Luthier Steve Klein. And featuring prominently in here, of course, is Steve Kaufman, the actual builder of all but the first 20 Klein guitars. Uh, here's, here's a page. That, uh, see if I can get this in the picture for you. There's, um, oops, wrong hand. There's Jesse Colin Young. And, no, and Steve Stills. And there's Joni Mitchell. And here's Leo Kotke over here. Lots of people have played Klein guitars over the years. And they're quite wonderful. But there's another picture here I've bookmarked that I wanted to show you. It kind of shows you a bit of what goes on inside the guitar. The bracing is not Martini. It is not Gibson-y. It's its own thing, and it's science is what it is. Here's kind of what's going on inside of these guitars. Radical radial bracing. Carbon fiber as the bridge plate with carbon fiber wings, arms that fly off and attach to the back of the guitar. There's all kinds of really radical stuff going on here. This guitar, Steve made a comment on, uh, on the build sheet about the 396L. This is the same model Muriel Anderson plays, but in Koa and with a cutaway, right? Top of Sitka Spruce, back and sides, highly figured Koa. Oh my God, it's gorgeous too. And you know, I always like to show off this part of the guitar because that's what the guitarist gets to look at. And that's fabulous. I could look at that for a very, very long time, several years if necessary. Fingerboard is ebony, bridge is ebony, binding is holly, holly binding. Very lovely light colored binding, but it's not plastic. It's not ivoroid. It's not Bolteron, the magnificent. Uh, sounds like a Marvel character. The L model differs from the standard 396 with a 14-foot mahogany neck, open gear shirtler tuner, shallower depth, and pinless bridge with the strings feeding through from the inside. Because the, the strings on this one feed through the inside, on the other Klein guitars, Klein Kaufman guitars, there's a little, it's like a little nail head sticking out here. And the ball end goes over that and heads across at an angle over its own bridge saddle. Six individual saddles on lots of guitars. This one, you restring it from inside the guitar, which means to get in there, there's a magnetic door down here that pops open, and that's how you fix the guitar or work on a pickup if you've got a pickup in one of these things. Smart people building guitars. Love it. Steve Kaufman, brilliant guy. Super cool cat, too.
There's a pal of mine, Predacon the Pal. He's a brilliant gent, really cool cat, another cool cat. Daniel Levitin wrote This Is Your Brain on Music, uh, the, uh, the, the handbook on lies, on logic, on how to figure out if things stack up logically. Brilliant guy. All kinds of wonderful books. on. He's a brain scientist. And his contention, and I agree with it completely, is that two, there are two main methods of enjoying music, of anticipating correctly what's going to happen, and it does, and you get to say to yourself, I'm so smart, and give yourself a little shot of joy juice in your brain. That's method one. Method two is predicting incorrectly what's going to happen and being delighted by the result. This guitar, in my ear, kind of demonstrates principle number two. I'm playing a guitar. I expect it to sound like so many guitars do, wonderfully, Martini or Gibsony or something, you know, some sort of design aspect that my my ism is familiar with from several decades of playing guitar. This thwarts that entirely. It thwarts that whole, that whole theme entirely. But the surprises, the delight is huge in hearing what actually does happen. articulates beautifully. As lovely as the saturation is, that's delightful, the individual articulation of the notes is wonderful, and I think that comes a lot from, we've talked about this before, forgive me, the bridge being kind of in the middle of the lower bout, where most of the sound happens. The sound hole is only half aptly named. Most of the sound of the guitar is generated by the lower bout. And so when you have this, the bridge in the, kind of the middle of the lower bout, instead of up close to the uh, to the sound hole, the way it happens on most other 14 fret guitars. You get this really intense articulation that finger stylers tend to like, and that's why some finger stylers tend to favor 12 fret guitars because on a 12 fret guitar, the bridge ends up being more in the middle of the lower bout rather than being up closer to the waist. Not to say you can't play any kind of music on any kind of guitar, you certainly can, but it's just you know, maximized for particular applications. check and see if there are any comments or questions. If not, I'll let you go. Back to your uh, your lunch hour here. Thanks for tuning in to the Friday Noontime webcast that happens almost every Friday. Um, the website is just about completely updated. It will be very, very soon. Constantly guitars moving in and moving out, and me having no children or grandchildren to handle these internet chores for me takes me a little longer than it would take someone else that uh, actually has progeny that could help with these things. Checking, checking, swiping left. Uh, hello, Janine Heath. 
Nice to see you. Hope you're feeling better. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Hi, Annie Wilson. Great. Hugh O'Connor, Steve Kahn. Nice to see you again. Saw you very recently. Thanks for coming to the show. People everywhere see us as we fly. Yeah. A couple of momentary hangs of the video stream. Sound is fine. Okay. Lots of ring throughout the harmonics. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Oops. Uh, no, I don't need to do that. Scale length is huge on this one. It's 25.6 or 7, really long scale, which means for kind of maximized for alternate tunings. When you've got a lot, when the, at a given string, at a given pitch, a longer string length will be stiffer to play than a shorter string length. So that's why short scale guitars, guitars where the distance between the nut and the bridge saddle is shorter by a half an inch typically than long scale guitars kind of generally considered better for blues because you can bend those notes easier. Also a little, typically a little softer feel under the hand. This one is set up just beautifully. You can hit it hard, even though it's really long scale to maximize uh, staying in pitch and not rattling when you drop the tuning down to D or even C sometimes. Long scale is the, the long answer to a short question. It's my specialty. Hi, David Hilliard. Fingerboard width is uh, one and three quarters. One and three quarters across the fingerboard. Fine, fine guitar. Asking price. Hold on to your butts. To quote Samuel L. Jackson. Hold on to your butts. $13,000. But there's flex in that. There is certainly flex in that. The gal who owns it said, uh, you know, I'll take any reasonable offer. So long as it's kind of in that neighborhood, north of 10 somewhere, totally worth it. Really radical guitar, but it's, this is one of those ones that certainly the design of it is radical and shouts at you from across the room. Holy smokes, what's that? But it doesn't, it's, it's not terribly blingy. It's got some bling, it's got some eye candy, but when you get up close, you see all of this fine work that is just astonishing. This scarf joint back here, really hard to do and beautifully done. Just fantastic. It's got a little bit of lute look to it. It's very slender. It's easy. To, it's an, it's an easy play. Strangely enough, a guitar even this size would be a good couch guitar because it's so skinny. It just leans right back into you. You don't have a lot of depth here to throw your elbow and shoulder shoulder over. tones, really, really bellish tones. And if you need it, you've got the cutaway to get up to the meadly meadly notes up here. I don't find myself up this neck of the woods too often. Even that high, the intonation is really great. Built by a total expert, super nice guy, brilliant guitar, Feels great, plays great. Too bad it's so ugly, huh? Wonderfully beautiful guitars as well. Maybe next week, if nothing else new comes in, perhaps next week I'll show you the, uh, give you another tour. I think I did one a few weeks ago. I'm sure I did several weeks ago of the other climb that's in right now, the 45.7. Take a look on the website. I may have even linked the video off the website. If it was a very clever boy, I did that. And if I didn't, I wasn't. So... That's what I have to tell you this week. The Klein Kaufman, this is the 30, um, the, uh, the 30, 396L, and it's the Muriel Anderson model. I've only got two Kleins in the shop at the moment, Klein Kaufman. Klein designed them, Kaufman built them. Both brilliant gents. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any further questions or comments, stack them up down below in the comments section. I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Right now I'm gonna take this video, send it over to Instagram, and then to YouTube, and uh, if, you, if you want to, you can subscribe to all those places rather than here, so that in case you're not here for the live stuff, you can catch it. These videos somehow live online forever, apparently, which is quite remarkable. But if, it's, if you want easier access, perhaps YouTube is the way to go, the Stevie Coyle Music Channel over there. Uh, that's, that's, all the, uh, that's all the rabid self-promotion I can do right now, is to tell you that uh, Mighty Fine Guitars is open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for retail. 
open Tuesday and Wednesday for lessons only. And there's a little bit of room for lessons. I've had a couple of people, you know, this time of year, uh, schedules changing and whatnot. If you, if you are interested in fingerstyle guitar lessons, in any kind of guitar lessons, beginner lessons, people say, oh, you must not teach beginners. I'm just a beginner. I love teaching beginners because beginners, you folks get, if there are any here, you folks make bigger jumps all at once. And I love being around for that, those moments where all of a sudden you were this kind of guitarist and you got something and you became that kind of guitarist instead of just climbing up. The, the, the grow is more incremental. It's slower and more incremental typically. Every once in a while, the more advanced folks will get a moment where they, they kind of jump states. But uh, I love working with beginners. Online is fine. Unless you're an absolute beginner where I would need to be there to wrestle your fingers around. If you've got a chord or two under your hands, give me a shout. We'll put together an online lesson. Zoom, FaceTime, um, what's that on the Skype? Skype is arguably the best. It's got the best sound. So if you do any of those three things, we can set up lessons payment by PayPal, Venmo. It's all easy as pie these days. And do hit me up. Tuesdays and Wednesdays are all about lessons. Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays are open for retail. Uh, Friday and th Thursday and Friday... 10 to 6, Saturday, 10 to 5. I should write that down myself. Thanks for tuning in. Stevie Coyle here at Mighty Fine Guitar signing off. See you down the road and next week, probably with the other Klein guitar.